So I wanted to uh, talk about uh, uh, jQuery Mobile. So jQuery Mobile is a new project that we've been working on, and we just released uh, last, uh, uh, I, I guess just over a, a month ago, the, the first alpha, and we released the, the second alpha just uh, last week. So uh, this is a project that's been, um, you know, very uh, dear to me because it, it's been, um, it, it's been a lot of work going into it. I started working on this uh, last year, back in 2009, and I wanted to uh, first create some tools that could help with eventually doing better uh, mobile work and mobile testing. And uh, what I've started to learn is that, that doing cross-browser mobile web development, it can be really, really hard, and it can be uh, you know, really crazy. Um, thankfully, though, it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. It used to be just uh, just really awful, uh, and uh, it was. Um, but, but thankfully, browser mobile browsers are getting much much better. So one of the simple goals that I had uh, was to make jQuery work on the most popular mobile platforms. Now, this sounds like a relatively easy goal. Um, it, it, the hard part would just be obviously doing all the bug fixing and all that. But it's actually really, really hard to determine this because there are a couple questions that you need to answer when you're doing uh, mobile web development. First, you need to determine what platforms and what browsers are popular. Uh, you also need to determine uh, what browsers are capable of supporting modern scripting. And this just means you know, uh, JavaScript code and uh, being able to have some sort of DOM, maybe being able to do some sort of AJAX as well. And then finally, being able to determine what devices you should actually buy and then what simulators you should download to do your testing. Now, the thing is, the, the problem is, is that there's no good answers to these questions. Uh, in order to answer them, you need to get uh, some good data. Now, there are a number of different resources, and I was most interested in resources that had international data. Um, data for uh, you know, not just uh, the United States or Asia or Europe, but you know all places that use actively use mobile phones. Um, there are two that seemed particularly good. One was called a uh, Stat Counter. Stat Counter uses uh, JavaScript to keep track of users on your website, and they track uh, a couple million websites and you know a couple billion visitors every month. So this serves as a pretty good representation of what people are using across the globe. And then there's also uh, Gartner, and Gartner uh, keeps track of how many physical phones are being sold, uh, so that you can see you know, how many uh, Android devices are being sold, how many iPhones are being sold, uh, stuff like that. Um, one thing I thought was interesting though was that when I was looking at what people were supporting already, people who were doing web development for mobile devices, uh, most of them were already supporting or only looking to support like the iPhone or Android. Um, and, and the reason for this is, is that most web developers are only interested in supporting what is physically in front of them and that they only want to support uh, of what they're most familiar with. And at least in the United States, most web developers have an iPhone or maybe uh, an Android device. But the thing is, is that when you start to look into the data uh, that comes out, you can see that the platforms that are popular aren't the ones that you expect. The most popular mobile platform is Symbian. Symbian is an operating system created and released by Nokia. And this is a, a, a very popular platform. And it's used by uh, you know, millions and millions of users across the globe. Um, and then only after that is iPhone. 
and you know, at, in, in comparison, iPhone is is not nearly as popular. If you look at the, the devices that are uh, being sold, uh, you can see that even now, uh, Symbian, Nokia's platform, is still selling incredibly well. It is the most popular, not only is it the most popular platform, but it's also the best selling as well. So it, it's selling just absolutely, you know, millions and millions of devices every month. And it's actually selling almost three times more devices um, than iPhone and, and Android. The problem is, though, is that when you're looking at these platforms, there's no good information about what versions of these platforms are popular. Uh, it's not clear if, you know, if like Symbian um, S60 version 3 is the most popular, or version 5, or some other version. It, it, these, this information isn't really well known. And it's also not really published anywhere, which is uh, rather unfortunate. But the most important data is looking at what browsers are popular. Because it doesn't matter what platform you're using if you're using a different browser on that phone. Now, as a result, the most popular mobile platform is Opera. Uh, Opera is used you know, absolutely everywhere. And this is largely due to its Opera Mini browser. Uh, Opera Mini is uh, not really a true browser. It actually has, it, it, it's, it's what's called a, a proxy browser in that it doesn't do rendering on the device. It communicates with the server, which does the rendering, and then brings the, the information down to the device to display. Now, the result of that is that it allows the, the Opera Mini browser to run on pretty much any phone. It doesn't matter how capable it is or not. But um, if we look at the additional data, we can see that even then, you know, like iPhone isn't very popular. Like the, uh, the second most popular platform is BlackBerry. Uh, BlackBerry is very, very popular. And it's actually grown uh, significantly over the, uh, the past year. In the past year, it's grown almost 10% of, of its global market share, which is, really, really massive. In, in fact, it's in, this, in the past year, it's grown uh, as much as Android, uh, so w which, is, uh, which is very, very interesting. Now, the problem is, is that, again, there's no good information about what versions of these browsers are popular. We don't know what version of Opera Mini is popular. We don't know what version of Windows Mobile people are using. It, it's, it's really quite frustrating. Um, I've heard that Yahoo is, go, is planning on releasing some data um, uh, about what mobile platforms are being used, but they haven't done that yet. Uh, I hope some major company does, you know, either Yahoo or Google or, or, or what, what have you, uh, because right now there is just no good information about uh, what versions of these platforms are being used. So one of the important things that you need to do when you're developing uh, a mobile application is that at the end, you, you kind of have to draw a line and say, we're only going to support things uh, that have a certain level of capability. This is, I feel, uh, a very good strategy because you know, at the end of the day, your time is valuable. You know, you need to uh, focus on a specific number of platforms that you want to try and support. This is uh, a strategy employed by Yahoo. It's called the uh, Yahoo Graded Browser Support. Um, and what they do is they give a grade of A to the very best browsers. And they give a grade of C to the browsers that are, are, are bad. And uh, that, that low grade means that they actually don't get any JavaScript or CSS. Uh, they just get a plain HTML web page, the very basic. Uh, but the A grade browsers get the best experience. They get all the JavaScript, all the CSS, 
and they look really, really good. I think that's the best way to do web development. You know, to have to try it and support as many browsers as you can with an A grade, but then, you know, the browsers that just can't do it, you know, the bad browsers, they get that low level C grade. So this is Yahoo's graded browser support chart that, um, you know, they, they support like, you know, Firefox and Internet Explorer, Safari and Chrome. And they support it on a number of different platforms as well. You know, uh, uh, Windows XP, Windows 7, you know, the different Mac uh, platforms as well. So, well, I looked at this chart and I decided to sit down and try to do the same with uh, mobile platforms. It ended up looking something like this, uh, which is uh, way, way more complicated. There are many more platforms, many more versions of those platforms, there are more browsers uh, and more versions of those browsers. It, it, it's, it's really quite complex. Uh, this makes it very hard to try and determine what exactly is, uh, uh, you know, what exactly you should be focusing on. So, but, but looking at this, we can start to see some, uh, some basic patterns. So for example, um, there's some platforms that are just really, really good. The different iOS platforms you know, that, that, that support iPhone and iPad, they're really high quality. and They, they have a really good experience. There's also uh, the Android platforms. Um, they're also really good. They, they, use, they use WebKit, and WebKit's a really good uh, rendering engine. Uh, there's also, uh, the, but the, the latest releases of many of these browsers are using really good rendering engines. And as a result, they're really fast. They render really well. And you can pretty much guarantee that any website you're going to write is going to work on them. So this includes like the latest BlackBerry, uh, the latest Symbian, uh, uh, things like that. Now, now uh, beyond the platforms, though, you start to see uh, uh, some of the other browsers uh, that go on multiple platforms. So, for example, Opera is on many different platforms, and their uh, support is is rather good. They, they make a good browser that works in a lot of places. Uh, Firefox is working on their mobile browser as well. And that's starting to uh, exist on more platforms as well. It, it, it's, it works on uh, Mego, a Linux platform that, uh, is released, that is used on Nokia devices. And it's also uh, being released now on uh, Android. Um, and at least in playing around with uh, the, the mobile Firefox, I've been very impressed with it so far. It seems to be uh, a very fast uh, as a result. 